everyone, welcome back to part two of demand forecasting. Now that we see the value of demand forecast, let's discuss the components that go into it. So we have four components of effective forecast. We'll begin with historical data. Now what type of historical data do you think we can use that will be valuable for coming up with a demand forecast for our hotel? That's right. If you said any one of these types of data. Okay, so, and actually some of this data can, can be found in your SIM. For instance, if you want to look at the booking pace by segment, if you go to the information section under revenue optimization, you can find the market index and booking pace. Now, it won't be by segment, but it will tell you by booking pace. And what that means is basically how much time before does it take to, to book for your hotel? And that's helpful to know when you're forecasting because if you know that there's short lead times then we don't necessarily have to worry about um, selling out 30 or 40 days in advance uh, what's also helpful to know is what are the denials uh, per year okay so how many people have how many guests have we turned away uh, this can be very insightful because if we're turning away a lot of guests particularly because of the price then maybe we are actually uh, priced too high Cancellations are also important, okay, and that, that can also be found uh, in the SIM when you're looking at the revenue forecast, okay. Um, it will actually tell you the, the, the cancellations, and this is based off of historical data. We won't go into all of them, okay, but again, it's just important to be familiar with all the different types of data that's already happened in the past so that we can understand what's going on in the future. Um, particularly, your, your group mix is helpful to see as well. We'll talk a little bit more about um, group mix when we're discussing channel uh, management. And in terms of demand generators and drainers, well, a demand generator is simply um, uh, an event or an occurrence. So take, for instance, perhaps the Olympics uh, that's going to cause more uh, demand. So that's important to know because obviously, for instance, the Olympics comes every four years. So if the previous year you, you had the Olympics, <clears throat> you can't use that same information uh, for the next year. A demand drainer would be the opposite of that. So, I mean, obviously, we're, when you think about uh, COVID, that's quite a demand drainer. Um, so questions might be is how long will it take to recover from uh, a drainer such as, such as that. Now, typically, we want to look at, you know, year over year or, you know, this week, last year. <clears throat> um, but because, first of all, we're only going to be cycling for one year, you might not have that information. If you do look at the information tab, um, particularly under market index, it will give you the last year's historical data. Next set of data is our current data, okay? Otherwise known as obviously, you got it, present data. Um, so think about present data. What currently could be um, valuable to know for forecasting? You got it. Well, of course, we want to know how many rooms are left to sell, right? So if we have a 200-room hotel, um, you know, can we sell them all? How many rooms are actually currently booked? Okay, so maybe we have groups that are booked. Um, but we also want to know what are, what's actually officially booked. So, you know, number of rooms booked. That can be found, again, under your revenue forecast. You're going to see the number of um, rooms that are booked, okay? And if you can figure it out, can you figure out how many rooms are available in other hotels? Okay, so maybe another hotel has their um, hotel completely fully booked. So that might help you forecast what's going to happen in your hotel. Okay, so it's really important um, to understand what's happening currently. Now, again, we're not going to be talking about group wash in terms of the SIM, but when we talk about group wash in general, what we're talking about is um, what are the cutoff dates? So for instance, let's say a, uh, a wedding has, um, is planning to come in June, and right now it's April. Um, when are we going to guarantee those rooms up until? If only 50 rooms of that wedding show up, we have to have a cutoff date to say, okay, you know what, it's, you know, it's two weeks before your wedding. Can we sell those rooms now? Can we release those rooms? So that's what we mean by cutoff dates. And that's something that you would negotiate um, with your vendor 
ideally you want to have cutoff dates that are you know well before the um, the day in which you have to sell those rooms that way you, if you know people don't show up <clears throat> and we can actually sell those rooms again to uh, you know transient guests rather than holding those rooms and also another hopefully if you have the information figuring out what is your current um, competitor's pricing set at. Now, of course, in the sim, that might be challenging to do, but of course, when you're looking uh, from a hotel, um, you can always take a look at the websites of other hotels and see what their current prices are. So that's what you would be doing when you were forecasting for a real hotel rather than the simulation. Now, the next set of data we'll be discussing is well, future data. Okay, so when we're thinking about future data, well, that's when we're going to talk more about um, sort of more market demand, more economic um, influences. We want to look at it from a bigger point of view. Okay, but again, remember those demand generators and drainers. Okay, we talked about that in historic. Same thing. Obviously, if you have the, the Olympics coming up in two or three years, that's going to be something that's important to discuss for future. Um, even the competitive sets and supply and demand, you know, what happens if uh, is a new hotel going to be built in two years? How is that going to affect uh, your supply and demand? Uh, future pricing could also include it in terms of inflation. You know, what are we going to do? How are we going to adjust? And we have certain companies that will actually forecast. Now, these are similar. They, they do a lot of forecasting for real estate as well. They'll predict, you know, pricing, housing prices. But CBR is a very good company. Uh, they'll actually um, they will f predict future um, ADR and um, RGI prices in in per province. Actually, they're a Canadian uh, company, so very interesting. Now, what does that mean for the sim? Well, again, if you take a look at your information uh, and you look at your Hotel Association Outlook quarterly reports, that would be the same idea as a as a forecast or PKF or CBRE report. Now those are the three components and you probably might remember well I thought there was four and there is one more and that's just pure insight and that just takes time um, and experience and the more that you run the sim uh, the more you'll have a better idea more insight as to how to forecast effectively. So Let's talk a little bit about forecast accuracy. And this I'm sure you'll, re you'll recall from uh, the previous sim and decision making. But what happens when we forecast too low? And what happens when we forecast too high? Take a moment to recall or consider. You got it. So here are some um, issues, and particularly when it comes to pricing. Okay, so if we forecast too low, uh, then we, we assume there's less demand. Well, what happens is, well, we want to try and capture more demand, so we might raise it, we might lower our prices, uh, we might open up those discounts. Okay, we don't put um, any length of stay restrictions, and ultimately we're just going to dilute our ADR. Okay, so it's going to be lower than, than usual. Um, of course, staffing-wise, we're gonna, not going to have enough staff or probably even uh, supplies. But in this case, we're not going to worry too much about staffing. Okay, we're only looking at top-line revenue, so we're going to be concerned with uh, how to, how much revenue we can uh, generate. Now, what happens when you forecast too high? Uh, well, we think that we're we're going to be um, very busy. What do we usually do? Oh, well, we increase our rates, and we might sit proud and empty sometimes. Okay, so we, you know, we have too high rates. We're not capturing enough of the maybe lower demand that's interested in, and we end up turning away people. Okay, so remember going back to that, those too many. We might have too many denials if we forecast too high. Uh, a lot of people are going to go to our competitors. So of course, really interest, really vital that we forecast accurately, um, so that that can reflect in our prices that are accurate as well.
Just a reminder, when you are completing your presentations, make sure you, you do address the forecast for um, occupancy, ADR, RevPAR, and food and beverage, but also identify some historical future and current uh, data, talk about a little bit of insight, and what was the impact specifically um, for your forecast accuracy uh, given your hotel's performance. Thanks for watching and happy revenue managing.